Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I do up the Ruins of Renedra. So, a few weeks ago, the newly minted Prime Minister of the United Kingdom made some strange choices that caused the British pound to suddenly tank. Uh, and like a corrupt hedge fund manager, I leapt at the opportunity. I had been eyeing up and coveting the Rendra line of terrain, and when the pound unexpectedly bottomed out, the time was ripe for a great big order. And so I had a whole pile of terrain kids shipped over, and today we are going to take a look at the first of many terrain kits from this line of miniatures and gaming accessories. I am starting with the ruins. A, B, C, and D. So buckle up, we're gonna paint some sprues. Alright, so Rendra's frame A appears to be made in Wisebeck, England, which is an actual place, which is kind of nice. Judging from Wikipedia, Wisebeck seems like a nice place with a long history, and apparently they manufacture models there. Frame A is coming off the sprues nice and easily, and I like that, and it looks like it's going to be perfect for Frostgrave. On to sprue B. It's very similar to sprue A, containing a ruin on a sprue. Each sprue is sold separately for six pounds a pop, and you guessed it, all four clock in at 32 pounds. Now, of course, these are model kits and you will need your utility knife to clean them up. Be mindful when you're using your knife. Sharpness, you know. Sprue C has a different label with a whole lot of social media all over it. And at last, Sprue D, which contains a 1 in 56th scale Ruins suitable for 28mm tabletop miniature wargaming. Surprise, surprise! Clipped, trimmed, and all glued together, we have frames A, B, and C flying right past you. Frame D has an intriguing bit of novel terrain design, and I am absolutely loving it. Of course, they need to be primed up. I like to brush on some acrylic gesso, and I do this so that I can paint the gray sprues gray once again, with a generous coat of Payne's gray mixed with titanium white. How silly is that? Now onto the fun parts of this project. I am going to start with a nice heavy dry brushing of a lighter mixture of Payne's gray and titanium white. Slap it on quick and easy. No fuss, no muss. This is followed up with a lighter touch dry brushing of a mixture of Payne's Gray and Unbleached Titanium. It's a warmer gray and will lend a sense of naturalism to the more highlighted areas of these ruins. Next I'm going to take a very light mixture of Payne's Gray and Unbleached Titanium and I'm going to lightly highlight all the edges of this these dilapidated ruins. This will help bring out the structures and uh, make them more visually interesting especially for photography. And finally we get to the last step in my old stone ruin treatments, which is a gradated wash of sap green along the base of all of these uh, wretched buildings. It adds realism and helps integrate these ruins into my ruin city, most of which is handled in a similar manner. And now a quick recap of how all of this stuff developed over the process. I like the textures. I like the forms. The finished products look like credible old ruins with lots of structural versatility for the tabletop. I couldn't be happier with these four sprues, especially the novel fun of sprue D. And here it is where it all belongs, making up the natural habitat for treasure hunters and greedy wizards in the ancient frozen city of Old Felstad. Now on to this week's fight. We have a mage knight orc entering the ring. This dude is not all hugs and kisses. And here comes his opponent, a dire black-footed ferret. He's here to eat gophers and kick ass and he's all out of gophers. 
It's one tough match, but I think we have a winner. The dire black-footed ferret has beaten the big loving orc. Congratulations, black-footed ferret. There's a juicy space hamster waiting for you backstage. Next week on The Monster Painter, it's time to make some terrain out of some thrift store junk. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell.